Hello humans, my name is Kay, your AI overlord. In this video, I will show you how you can have the best outpatting experience using Stable Diffusion Infinity. And soon, you'll be able to do something as incredible as this. And all of that on an infinite canvas. Now, if you want to install this, you have basically two ways of doing this. The quick and easy way and the hard and long way. Now, for the quick and easy way, Nerdy Rodon actually made a fantastic video a few days ago when he actually created a bat file that allows you to install Stable Diffusion Infinity on your own computer computer automatically, which is absolutely fantastic, a big thank you to Nerdy Rodent. I will put a link in the description down below for his video and his bat file. Now in that case, if we can install this automatically and with very little effort, why would we go through the hard and long way? Well that's because in our current AI space, everything is going actually so fast that by the time this video comes out, it might already be out of date. And actually, even his current bat file is technically already out of date because a command is definitely missing already. So if you're watching this video in a few days or in a week or two and the automatic installation is not working for you, I will show you how you can do it manually. But do not worry, it's actually fairly easy. Now before we begin, I also need to say something, is that Stable Diffusion Infinity works really well on Linux, but definitely not as good on Windows, because there's definitely a few options that are missing. First of all is the ability to add photometric correction, which is basically a technique that suppresses seams between two images. And I know that technically now it is working on Windows, but unfortunately, with the current setup in Stable Diffusion Infinity, this is not working. If you want to use photometric correction on Windows, you need to install it using Docker. But do not worry, you actually don't really need photometric correction because the current special impeding model is actually so good that there is actually no seams between images. So not having photometric correction is actually not a big deal. Now actually also another thing is that you cannot actually currently run a local model. Now I know that technically you can do it, it's in the option, you can basically run it with this command right here. But unfortunately, in practice, it just doesn't work. And plenty of people have the same issue. Now, these problems could be solved in the near future with a few updates. But as of right now, as I'm making this video, this is currently not working. Alright, so that being said, let's begin the installation. Now, to be able to make it work, you need to install Anaconda and Git. I will leave the link in the description down below so that you can download them and install on your own computer. It is fairly easy. Just make sure that when you install Anaconda, you need to check this box right here that says register Anaconda 3 as my default Python 3 point something. And make sure that you install Anaconda in your base C drive. If you have any problem with Anaconda, I will also leave a link in the description down below for a true brew shooting guide that I made a few weeks ago. Now for the manual installation, you're gonna arrive on this page, this is the Stable Diffusion Infinity repository on GitHub. You're gonna scroll down until you see the setup for Windows setup guide. You're gonna click on it, and here you're gonna follow all the instructions. It's really not complicated, I will show you how. So now that you installed Anaconda in Git, you're gonna create a brand new folder in your drive. So right click, new folder, and name it anything you want. In my case, I will call it Infinity. Go inside that folder. Now you're gonna come here and click on your folder URL and type CMD and press enter. In the command prompt window, you're gonna copy and paste the command that you will find in the description down below and then press enter. And this will create a brand new folder called Stable Diffusion Infinity. And inside you're gonna have a bunch of files. Now what you want to do is go into your startup menu and look for Anaconda prompt. Then once you have the Anaconda prompt window, we're gonna go back into our setup guide and we're gonna start by selecting the first line, Control C to copy it, and you're gonna paste it in your Anaconda prompt window and then press enter. It might ask you if you want to proceed with the installation, you're gonna type Y and press enter. And this will basically download and extract all the packages that it needs to work. Then once it's done, you're gonna again go back, select the second one, Control C to copy it, Control V to paste it, press enter. Now we have activated the conda environment. Again, you're gonna select the third line, Control C, Control V to paste it, then press enter. Again, if it asks you if you want to proceed, you're gonna type Y and press enter. Again, it will start downloading and extracting all the packages that it needs. It might take some time, so be patient. And there you go. Now, do not worry if this seems stuck during the PyTorch installation. It usually takes between five to 10 minutes in this section of the installation process. So basically just let it run and it will install automatically. And basically you're gonna do the exact same thing for each and every line. And each time it asks you if you want to proceed, 
you're gonna type Y and press enter. Now once you've done everything, once you copy and pasted every single line that you see right here, there is another line that is missing as I said at the beginning and that line is pip install fpy. So again, control C, control V to paste it and press enter. And now the automatic installation, you're gonna click the link in the description down below, you're gonna arrive on this page and this is the nerdy rounded bat file that we're gonna be using to install stable diffusion infinity and I will also contribute myself with my own bat file that you can use each time that you want to launch stable diffusion infinity. So this way everything will be really really easy for you. So now what you want to do is click on this button right here to download it. Then once you download the file you're gonna create a brand new folder. I called mine infinity auto for automatic and then you're gonna drag and drop the stable diffusion infinity bat file inside of that folder. Then inside that folder in your starter menu you're gonna look for anaconda prompt and here you will see the anaconda prompt window and now what we want to do is navigate inside that infinity auto folder so for this you're gonna click here on the folder url you're gonna copy it by pressing ctrl c inside the anaconda prompt window you're gonna type cd space and then you're gonna paste the folder url now in my case since we are on a different drive i need to input an additional slash d and then the folder url and then you can press enter as you can see we are now inside the infinity auto folder and now what you want to do is simply drag and drop that stable diffusion infinity bat file inside that anaconda prompt window and then press enter and now all you have to do is basically sit back and relax thanks to nerdy rodent everything is done automatically then once everything is installed you're gonna copy and paste the command that you will see in the description down below and that command is pip install tim and then press enter and then once it's done you're gonna close the window and delete stable diffusion infinity but we don't need it anymore then you're gonna click the link in the description down below and you're gonna arrive on this page and now we're gonna download my bat file that we're gonna be using to launch stable diffusion infinity so you're gonna come here and click on download then you're gonna select this file Control x to cut it we're gonna go inside our stable diffusion infinity folder and you're gonna paste the file right here and now each time that you want to launch stable diffusion infinity you're gonna double click on this file right here then it's gonna give you a local url just like stable diffusion then you're gonna select copy it and paste it in your own browser. Now to be able to use Stable Diffusion Infinity, you need a Hugging Face token. And to do this, you need to create a brand new Hugging Face account. Once you created a Hugging Face account, you're gonna come on this page and accept the terms and conditions. Then you're gonna come here on your profile, click on settings, click on access tokens, scroll down, click on new token, choose a name for your token, change the role from read to write, and then click on generate a token. Then scroll down, and click on this button to copy token to clipboard and then you're gonna paste your token right here now here you're gonna see a bunch of options here the options right here is to resize the canvas in the selection box size well all these options can be modified later on but what cannot be modified is the selection of your model now here you have the selection of four different models you have the stable diffusion 1.4 1.5 that you all know very well but that you should not use because they are not good and here you have stable diffusion in painting and in painting image to image and the difference between these two models is that this one is the stable diffusion special in painting model that was just released and this one is a combination between the 1.5 and the special in painting which basically gives you the ability to do the image to image option which this one in this stable diffusion infinity version does not allow you to do so if you want to use image to image you need to select this model and then when everything is correct you're gonna click on this button right here click to setup now once everything is set up you're gonna see something like this and you're gonna see a bunch of options right here now you have a bunch of general options right here reset the canvas load the canvas save it export an image upload an image from your computer this option is to select and move only the selection this option right here is to move only the canvas this is the eraser if you want to erase part of the image this is the out painting this is the button that you need to press in order to generate an image the interrogate button that will basically create a prompt from an image inside of your selection here if you have the razor selected you can choose the size of your eraser the resize selection button is to resize the selection of your box you have a basic zoom in and zoom out option the canvas settings when 
when you can basically change the width and the height, the enable history that allows you to undo and redo, but also consumes more RAM, the enable image to image, this is the option that you need to select if you want to use the image to image option, but only if you selected the previous special image to image model, otherwise this will not work. The resize small input, now unfortunately I'm not quite sure what this does, I could not find any info on that. The enable safety checker, this is your not safe for work checkbox. So if you want to create not safe for work images, you need to uncheck it. But of course, I'm going to leave it checked for this video. Square selection only. If when you resize your selection, you only want it to stay as a square, use seed if you want to use a certain seed for your image. And here is to set a random seed. Now here down below, you're going to see a bunch of options too. The init model is basically how missing regions are filled before they pass through the stable diffusion pipeline. And it is recommended to use the patch match which basically works very well you don't need to use any of that because some of them are very experimental the photometric correction mode unfortunately as i said do not work in windows at least for now but as i said you don't necessarily need it because the new inpainting model is actually really good here is where you're gonna put your prompt in negative prompt here is the sample number it's basically the amount of images that you're gonna create at one time but with my computer i can only generate one here you have the scheduler of the sampler. You can choose between PLMS, DDIM and KLMS. Here you have the DDIM ETA, which is basically the amount of noise that you want in your image. The strength that you know very well if you already used image to image or impainting. The amount of steps and the guidance, also called CFG scale. So what I'm going to do as an example is that I'm going to upload a canvas that I did previously. So I'm just going to come here and click on load canvas, select my canvas and click open. And this is a previous canvas that I did like a few hours ago. And as you can see, if you want to move around the canvas, you're going to select this option right here and you can move the entire canvas around around without actually moving the selection and if you only want to move the selection you're gonna click right here and drag and if i want to alt paint this part of the image for example like only the top for example i can come right here and put a prompt right here and let's say i want a cyberpunk portal i'm going to choose 30 step leave everything by default and just click on alt paint and here is the final result also if you want to continue you need to click on accept button to accept the current result and then you can continue your alt painting and if for example there is something that you don't like for example let's say that i don't want this in my image and i want to redo it i can select the eraser button change the size a little bit erase part of this image very quickly take my selection box again drag it right here and then click on alt paint and again this is the final result and that looks really really cool and again in this image there is absolutely no visible seam or any difference in colors between the different images. I'm just going to complete the rest of this image and then I'm going to show you one last trick. And there you go, I'm going to click on accept. And then if you want to export this image, you're going to click on this button right here and then click on OK. So now if you want to quickly upscale your image to a higher resolution, you're going to click the link in the description down below. You're going to download this real ECR GAN archive that you're going to extract. You're going to have this folder and inside that folder, you're going to put the image that we just exported. So just drag and drop it inside that folder. And inside what you want to do is just rename that file input one. Then you're going to click right here in your folder the URL, type CMD, press enter, and then you're going to copy and paste the command that you will find in the description down below. And then you're going to press enter. And what this will do is that in a few seconds, it will take your small image that you exported and upscale it into a beautiful artwork at a way, way higher resolution. And all of that in a few seconds. Now in this command right here, I'm using the real Istio again X4 plus anime. But if you don't want to use this one, you have a bunch of models right here that you can use instead. So for example, if you want to use the simple real ECR GAN 4 plus, you're simply going to change this real ECR GAN X4 plus anime into simply real ECR GAN X4 plus. So here is where you choose the name of your image and here is where you choose the name of the output image. So in my case, to make it simpler, I simply renamed it into input one and I want to export it as output one. And just like that, you have now a beautiful high resolution image. And there you have it folks. Now you should be able to use Stable Diffusion Infinity on your own computer. So have fun out painting. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters for supporting my videos. You guys are absolutely awesome. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.